Barron is a senior majoring in history and political science. Uh, in addition to his studies, he is also a member of the varsity fencing team here at BC, uh, part of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, as well as the National History Honor Society uh, Phi Alpha Theta. In his spare time, he enjoys reading thrillers, watching sports, and writing slash performing slam poetry. Please welcome Baron Lebrecq. Thank you all for, for coming. It's an honor to share the stage with so many other speakers who are doing such Im important research. So, today we're going to talk about Kenya and Kenya's current counterterrorism strategy, which I argue is needlessly dis discriminatory and based off of historical religious tensions in the country. And then we're going to move into successful efforts to combat the tensions and end with a call to action. So that's Kenya. We're going to talk about three areas. Nairobi, which is the political and commercial hub, as well as the site of a major recent terrorist attack. Mombasa, which is Kenya's second largest city, a stronghold of the Muslim minority, and a site of both historical and recent unrest. And Wajir, which is the site of successful inter-religious peace-building efforts that I argue must be duplicated and expanded to other areas to stay on the map for a second. Off to the right, you see the border between Kenya and, so and Somalia. Somalia is home of Al-Shabaab, which is an Islamic terrorist group, which has, since 2011, been crossing over the Kenyan border to raid the country and do small-scale terrorist attacks. The fact that it was able, in September 2013, to hit the heart of Nairobi, very far from the border, speaks to the uh, danger currently faced uh, in Kenya posed by al-Shabaab. From September 21st through 24th, the Westgate Mall in Nairobi was under siege for 80 hours by al-Shabaab, which led to wanton property destruction and 67 deaths. In the aftermath, things came out that uh, the police and military did not do a very good job of protecting Kenyan citizens and in fact looted most of the shops within the mall, and arguments over who had jurisdiction led to political infighting and uh, meant that a lot of time was wasted before the mall was entered by security forces and led to a much greater loss of, of life. Inept security forces and political infighting, combined with the public's desire for revenge in the wake of the attack, led to a harsh crackdown on ethnic Somalis and anyone suspected of sympathizing with al-Shabaab, which meant that a lot of ordinary law-abiding Muslims, many of whom were Kenyan citizens, were arrested, beaten, jailed, and killed due to prejudiced notions of justice. Unfortunately for Kenyan Muslims, they are and have been historically outnumbered. 82.5% um, of Kenyans are Christian and 11.1% are Muslim, which means that Christians outnumber Muslims by approximately uh, 15 to 2, and historically that's mattered a great deal. That's the Cathedral of the Highlands in Nairobi, back when Kenya was under British rule. It's big, it's spacious, it's clean, the roads are paved, people are there, people care about it. And we're going to contrast that with a mosque in Mombasa at the same time. It's fallen into disrepair. Everything is just, there's a very sharp contrast between the two images. Um, and the picture in Mombasa is uh, emblematic of problems faced by Muslims in Kenya throughout Kenyan history. Um, despite being Kenya's second largest city and the largest harbor in East Africa, most of the money made in Mombasa gets shipped up to Nairobi and other Christian-controlled parts of the country, and in return, they get less revenue, fewer social services, and a poorer quality of public servants. And historically, that's caused some problems. Flash forward to today, or more accurately, about a year ago, when riots erupted following the uh, assassination of a popular Muslim cleric, who the police uh, didn't really seem to care about finding the murderer of. Uh, that case is now going on over a year, and the police have no suspects. That's emblematic of life in Kenya for Muslims and being treated as second-class citizens. And that sounds pretty bad, and 
it is, but there's a precedent for it getting better. Now let's zoom in a little bit and talk about Wajir. In the northeast region of Kenya, primarily Muslim, and back in the early 1990s was hit with a lot of inter-religious violence. The woman in that picture is Deke Ibrahim, the founder of the Wajir Peace and Development Committee, a broad civil society organization that brought together religious leaders, local government officials, and professionals from cross-cutting sectors of society to create local, sustainable grassroots peace. With active involvement by the affected communities, it was instrumental in reducing violence there and in the surrounding areas, and I argue that it's a model to export throughout the country, especially in this time of political and religious turmoil. And one last factor is necessary to save Kenya, and that's increased action from religious leaders, both Christian and Muslim. While, few, while a few individuals have made sporadic calls for peace and an end to, to violence, they've been rare, and none have come from ofi official mouthpieces of any es established churches. This is in sharp contrast to the late 1980s, where in Kenya's switch from single party to multi-party politics, Religious leaders often spoke out both in sermons and in the press regarding the evils they saw in the country and efforts to change it. And that often came at a price, which, if you remember the assassination of the cleric, is being repeated now. There were very real threats of violence against priests, rare in a Catholic-majority country. The Anglican Archbishop, David Guattari, watched his house burn down by government-sponsored thugs. And that energy, that fervor to make things right no matter the consequence, is sorely lacking amongst religious leaders in Kenya today. A return to that spirit of religious political activism, along with a national commitment to the principles of Wajir, are necessary to save Kenya from the turmoil engulfing it. It will not be easy, but it is becoming increasingly necessary. Thank you.